I'm here to uh, talk a little bit about uh, sort of truth and fiction. Um, there's a lot of fiction going on in uh, the... You can see from this three days with uh, Paul Krugman representing fiction, and uh, hopefully I'm going to talk a little bit about, about truth as I see it at least. And I don't think all is lost for uh, blockchain and cryptocurrency because we have foes. If you go back to every disruptive technology, starting with the automobile, maybe even beforehand, there were foes, there were entrenched interests, the horseshoe lobby. Um, in the UK, they had this thing called, uh, I think it was the red flag or the yellow flag law, and it said that if you had an automobile, you had to actually have someone walk in front of it and wave a flag. Because you don't want to, like, you know, scare the horses or you have to let people, because, you know, automobiles are dangerous. The United States was a little bit looser with regulation, and we became the you know world capital of the uh, automobile industry, and it's still one of our largest industries. So blockchain has the potential of being one of the world's largest industries. And right now we have a couple of fo folks, a couple of groups that are uh, considered by some of the crypto anarchists and some of the other early people as being the enemy, and you have to get rid of them. You're never going to get rid of the entrenched uh, interests. You have to, however, find a middle ground where you call them out when they're um, spreading lies and spreading fear because of their self-interest. And, and you talk about that. I mean, all the Bitcoin is dead, um, Bitcoin's a scam, all this. If you notice who's saying it, let's see. Is there anything that might be an entrenched interest from JP Morgan with a $32 billion credit card uh, division? Hmm, I wonder. Uh, the head of PayPal said one of the biggest scams of all time. I wonder. Hmm. So, um, again, we're going to talk about a couple specific things. So in the beginning, um, in the beginning, people actually bartered. They created their own wealth. They shot an animal and they had a fur pelt and they decided that that was a form of value. The Fed does not go back before the time of Jesus Christ. The Fed goes back to just the early 1900s. And, you know, we forget about what money is and, and how it's gone from place to place because there are all these myths and, uh, you know, myths that all of a sudden become institutionalized. Uh, the Fed and the, and the IRS started within one year of each other. And the IRS was supposed to be a temporary 1% tax to, uh, to pay for World War I. Anybody here paying 1% tax, especially California residents? I moved to Puerto Rico, so I at least don't have taxes on my capital gains. I was the first person for the crypto community to move there. But again, I'm not a crypto anarchist. I'm a realist. I'm a progressive. And I don't mean a progressive in the sense of the socio-political meaning of that word. I mean that I believe progress is a good thing. Doesn't mean it should be unabated. You know, if we're doing AI, we better watch out for the killer robots and all that. But what happens too often is good ideas, good technologies are killed in the crib by the horseshoe industry of their time. Um, automobiles obviously came to prosper. I'm old enough to have been you know, pretty active, as you saw from the, the video, in the early internet days, in the early social media days. In all those cases, those industries could have been killed in the crib. MySpace had to go and fight the state of Connecticut who wanted to have everyone who went on MySpace prove that they were not a child molester. It's a little bit, um, you know, much. And uh, that didn't go through, and social media became what it is today. In the early days of the internet, there were a lot of folks called the netizens, who were kind of the crypto anarchists of their day, who said, you know, the internet routes around censorship and uh, just discards it as damage. And they wanted to have a big thing was never have ads on the internet. It's going to ruin it. What's the biggest thing on the internet today? <laughs> Some of the biggest companies in the world, right? Facebook and Google. I had a client in the early 90s that dared to actually put ads on the internet. They had the, the, the guys that looked like ZZ Top who sort of, you know, controlled the, the blacklist back then. Shut down left and right. They did, you know, almost terrorist activities against them. They would go and fax black paper to them because they did not want ads on the internet. Obviously, you know, it became something that gets abused if you read, you know, some of the Facebook uh, trials and things like that or, or, you know, things in front of Congress. But for the most part, it should be about choice and it should be about uh, education. 
Um, you probably all know about gold in the Fed. Um, gold used to be backing um, dollars. Um, it's interesting now that we're going into a trade war with China um, and many other places. Turkey, you know, it's going to probably expand to a lot of other places. Do you know why gold stopped um, backing uh, the U.S. dollar? Anybody? It was actually because we used to go and balance the trade deficit by shipping gold to the countries where we were out of, in, out of balance. And we owed the United Kingdom about $300 million of gold. Nixon decided, you know what? We don't really need this thing anymore. We're the United States. And that's where you now have trillions and trillions of dollars of uh, fiat currency backed by nothing. So banks are entrenched interest. Doesn't mean they're bad guys, it just means that they like things the way they are. And so if they have the opportunity to go and kill things in the crib, they'll do that. I didn't put Wall Street in here, but Wall Street is sort of another interesting sort of sidebar. I mean, some of them are same companies that own the banks. Um, other ones are independent investment banks, Goldman Sachs, etc. You'll have one division of Goldman Sachs say, you know, Bitcoin is, is, is never going to go anywhere. Crypto is never going to go anywhere. It's not backed by anything. It's not backed by the government. And then you'll have another division of Goldman Sachs invest in Circle and Polonix and say they want to be the first ones to do security uh, exchanges. So there's a lot of speaking out of both sides of mouths from banks and Wall Street. Um, it's not a coincidence that the all-time high for Bitcoin, when the little guy got in and started making some money, and again, you have to be wary of bubble behavior in, in, in any industry, but the day that it started going down was the day that the Chicago Board of Options um, you know, was able to have kind of regulated, regulated. Regulated doesn't mean that uh, there's still not uh, behavior that later might be uh, regulated in a different way. Um, as I understand from some of my trading friends, this happens in other markets, um, there are techniques where you can, you know, during very light times of liquidity like we have in the summer, um, you know, make a lot of money shorting things and throwing, you know, FUD out there and then collecting on it. And, uh, yesterday there was a slaughter in the marketplace and everybody's Bitcoin debt, Bitcoin debt, Ethereum debt, and everything's up 10% today. Yesterday, today was actually the day that the options expired for this month. Anyway, I don't have time to go into all those things. Governments, I think, we're in a world where other than the United States, where you have to renounce your citizenship, um, people do move with their feet. Um, and at least in businesses, too. Um, the U.S., other than, thank God for Wyoming. Wyoming, I don't have time to get in here today. Yay, yeah, yeah, Wyoming. My friend, Caitlin Long. Um, because the SEC has been very slow to define what is a security, what is a commodity, how ICOs can be regulated or not regulated, they've been throwing the biggest pieces of FUD I've ever seen since, I don't know, the beginning of shitstorms. Can I say that here? Um, and, you know, and, and, and yet Heather Prince, who's also on the SEC, says, we should approve the, the ETF right now. So there's just mass confusion going on there. Wyoming said, you know what, we're a state, we're going to go and, and legalize utility tokens and define them as such in our state. And there's other states doing this. So it's going to be very interesting. But in the meantime, business is leaving the United States. The Caribbean, the, the, the independent nations around Puerto Rico where I live, um, Bahamas, Bermuda, Caymans, uh, BVI, they're all racing to go and bring American entrepreneurs down there. Malta is racing to bring European uh, entrepreneurs there and say, we'll give you clarity. We don't think you're all criminals. Um, we'll be on a panel. I have a little issue with what uh, Robert Shapiro said uh, in terms of you know, again, not a crypto anarchist, but I, if you're looking for where the money laundering and the terrorist funding is, look at $100 bills. Don't look at uh, treasure sticks. $800 billion of $100 bills, most of it outside the United States. India went and said, oh, we're going to take care of this. We're going to have people return all the rupees, and, uh, and they have to get new rupees. Somebody I know is Indian just laughed at that. They said, they don't use rupees for you know, for black market activities. And they use $100 bills. Recall all the $100 bills, issue new ones. The old ones are worthless. That's how you get rid of a, a lot of the money laundering, not by going and making excessive, uh, uh, you know, restrictions on the average person trying to open an account. So, um, telcos. Um, 
for those of you who didn't Google my name today, Google it yesterday, <laughs> or not at all, um, I, uh, I filed a $224 million lawsuit against AT&T this morning. So, I, like many people in the Bitcoin community, uh, was hacked twice. The first was a smaller hack, and nobody in law enforcement uh, would pay attention to it, and the dollars weren't big enough to go and, uh, you know, hire a prestigious law firm. Um, but uh, in January, the numbers were $24 million, and um, all the evidence we have and all the rest lately show that AT&T is not only grossly negligent, uh, but, you know, arrest after arrest after arrest is showing that these gangs are actually hiring people in AT&T to pass over sensitive information. We'll have our day in trial. And anybody who uh, ever had uh, something similar uh, happen to me, I've got my contact information. I'm michaelaturpin.com or michaelatransform.pr. I'm at Michael Turpin if you want to follow me on Twitter and got all these other things up there. Uh, so that's, that's the suit right there. But um, I'd like to say about telcos that it's a sad thing that AT&T in particular, and to a lesser extent the others, but they've all had their issues, um, are just burying their, their heads in the sand when the blockchain, the consumer blockchain, is perhaps the biggest opportunity they've had in years for revenue and for new customers. Because the banks are saying, well, we don't know how it's regulated, we can't set up an exchange, and we have an exchange, you're gonna, you know, we're gonna shut down your account at Wells Fargo if you see $50 coming from Coinbase because you might be using it for terrorism funding, give me a break. I mean, if you have an account in a, in a, uh, in a bank in France and you send $100 to the US, do they say, oh, you might be a terrorist in France? No, banks trust banks. Um, that's why I use ItBit. Uh, it's actually owned by a bank, an exchange. If you've gotten shut down from uh, Coinbase, go to ItBit, because they're actually owned by a bank or they have a bank. They never bother you because it says bank of such and such. But um, what I was gonna say in terms of the positive side, the, the hope for the future on telcos is that telephone companies actually embrace the internet. And in the early days of the internet, I was told by a number of people, including studio executives, XYZ, in this case it was NBC, will never be on the internet. My mom is not gonna go in and put a second phone line in, hear this thing go, eh, 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 and you can't get anything on it. It's not like audio play or video. This is all user interface improvement. Now you just have your mom an iPhone, and you say, here mom, watch Netflix. This will happen to blockchain. And if any of the telcos went out and simply bought an existing exchange or partnered with one, they've got their hundreds of millions of uh, consumers, they already have all their KYC, that would be the dawn of things like Angry Birds blockchain. Because that way, you're gonna be able to have not just a small number of consumers today. When I got in, there was only one, one tenth of one percent of the US population had wallets, now it's two percent. So that's a pretty decent start. But in five years, it should be half a billion or more globally. So I think I'm running out of time. That's, uh, that's my uh, avatar on, uh, on Kitty Cash, Skycoin in the house. So uh, we've been working with Skycoin in the early days. There are, again, some wonderful innovative blockchains out there like Skycoin that are doing amazing things. I've had the pleasure of working with over 100 ICOs, 200 companies, um, and I think we're just getting started. Um, and uh, again, I'm not a crypto anarchist. I just believe in standing up for the rights of an industry that means well. And that's how you reach me. Thank you.